Greetings fellow horror enthusiasts, welcome to another marvelous video and thank you for joining us for another chilling journey through the eerie and the macabre. For today's video, we are exploring what the Nintendo Switch's library has to offer as far as horror games are concerned. Sure, the Switch is a name synonymous with a wholesome, family-friendly side of gaming, but the purpose of this video is to open you up to the thrilling world of frights that it has to offer. Go grab your Joy-Cons, turn down the lights and get under the sheets. We advise enjoying these in isolation for truly nerve-wracking experiences that get you hooked. Little Nightmares 1 and 2 When the award-winning Little Nightmares was given a sequel, the first one only got more popular. The gameplay was similar when we fired it up on the Switch and dove into the second one. It felt a lot like the first puzzle platformer in a 2.5D world, but with shorter load times and the introduction of a new protagonist. The first game had players follow Six, who finds herself trapped in a nightmarish vessel called The Moor attempting to escape its vividly grotesque inhabitants. The second, on the other hand, has you control Mono, the new protagonist, in a new world called Pale City, loaded with new disturbing threats, environmental puzzles and a whole lot of mystery. In addition to the prequel's gameplay, we learn that Mono can actually pick up select items and swing them as a weapon or a tool to solve puzzles and beat smaller foes. A great touch, if you ask me. It really made the already impressive prequel experience a lot more fulfilling. Project Zero – Maiden of Blackwater Project Zero, or Fatal Frame, the Maiden of Blackwater as North America knows it, has you control one of three playable characters, each of which fights the supernatural using their camera obscura power. The interconnected plot centers around these three as they investigate unforgiving areas of Mount Hickamy and uncover the secrets of the black water. While this third-person survival horror doesn't scare in obvious ways, we found it to be quite captivating. The narrative and its uniqueness with a concept of using antique cameras to fight ghosts. Environments are beautifully immersive and build a convincing atmosphere that gets you curious and invested. Maiden of Blackwater goes heavy on Japanese culture and storytelling while screaming art. The goal with this one was more to be a haunting experience than a scary one. Resident Evil 4 After all the Raccoon City business in RE2 and 3, Leon S. Kennedy is recruited by the US government as a special agent and soon tasked with the rescue of the president's kidnapped daughter while looking into the activities of a strange cult. Capcom mixed things up with this one. If you are an RE fan, you'll notice that the gameplay in this one is more action-oriented than its predecessors. However, replacing the fixed camera angles with a dynamic over-the-shoulder camera system was the most popular change and made the series feel like an entirely different experience. Another refreshing change in the gameplay, and keep in mind that we had just gotten done playing the second one before this, was the abundance of ammo. Finally, we are enjoying an RE game without stressing about how we wouldn't have anything to defend ourselves with if we didn't aim well and ran out of ammo. In all fairness though, not having ammo is also pretty awesome in its own way. Honorable mentions here include Paul Mercier voice acting for Leon and the game's detailed character designs. Observer The year is 2084 and the world is something of a cyberpunk nightmare. Daniel is an observer which refers to a modern-day detective who gets into people's minds and intrudes on their thoughts to interrogate them with a Dream Eater device. Created by the popular Blue Bear team, its neutral police hacker experience takes you through some pretty dark and impactful environments within people's heads as the plot investigates brutal murders in and around a sinister apartment building. Observer stands out most for its nightmarish dystopian reality. The time you spend in the story's twisted collection of minds is surprising to say the least, and not in happy ways. As you hack your way through the story, expect unexpected scares. Our favorite part about Observer was navigating through its well-designed world and the character's dark inner worlds, along with the creative puzzles that even made us forget about the lack of combat. Spirit Hunter Deathmark Our next horror game for the Switch is Spirit Hunter Deathmark a visual novel adventure title that was the first of its series. It's worth mentioning that when you're not directly playing the story through its visual novel format, you dungeon crawl to explore areas, rid them of spirits, 
and solve puzzles. So the story follows a default named protagonist, meaning that you can change the name from Kazuo Yashiki to whatever, who wakes up with a bout of amnesia to find himself in a mansion whose owner is found dead. He also notices a curse mark on his arm, one that the mansion's owner had too. The detective now sets out to solve the mystery of the death sentence on his arm and takes the help of a sentient doll and other mark bearers to do so. Being a visual novel, this one obviously exceeds in visual atmospheric storytelling. It reminded us of typical Japanese horror stories and I might even get on Letterboxd to find something Japanese to watch after this. While I love action games, this was one that managed to hold my attention in spite of its calmer investigation and interaction-based gameplay. It turns out that the game publications called this among the best Nintendo Switch horror visual novels or even among the best Switch visual novels. Spirit Hunter NG Following the success of Deathmark, Spirit Hunter NG, which stands for No Good, was supposed to contrast with the first title as far as its style and characters were concerned. Where the first story puts a chill, passive protagonist against a curse after isolating him from society, NG puts default named hothead Akira Kijima, an orphan, up against Kaguya. Kaguya is a deadly spirit that has a thing for playing Makaba games and makes it clear that Akira must play along in order to survive. NG took the gameplay from the first game and added deeper role-playing elements to it, like the judgment system, which allows you to decide how you want to shape different character relationships and consequently uncover more information about them. The story here was a more personal one, which extends to both the characters as well as the spirits you encounter. The more you play, the more immersive and eerie it gets. Dark Wood. Our next survival horror is a unique top-down game that charges players with the goal of escaping a forest somewhere in Poland that they wake up in as the Doctor. You have your diary on you, which you must go through and decipher to figure out what to do in order to escape the forest. While the Doctor is the initial point of focus, the game switches to the Stranger, who becomes the next character you control. With this sort of progression style, you explore the isometrically viewed top down semi-open world and scavenge during the day so that you can survive the nights in your hideouts. Having played it thrice, it's safe to say the Darkwood boasts a unique excellence. There is no way of knowing how the choices you make will impact characters around you, meaning that the branching storyline thoroughly incorporates your actions in-game. We initially thought of this as a mildly intimidating title, but when it's time to hold your own at night, we found it to be quite scary, even without jump scares. Amnesia Collection There is no talking about horror without bringing up Frictional Games' Amnesia. Before getting into what the collection offers, the general idea with Dark Descent and its expansion is to hold on to your sanity by keeping your time in the dark in check while also fleeing from something you can't fight. The collection contains the base game, The Dark Descent, its expansion, Amnesia Justine, and the indirect sequel, A Machine for Pigs. The Dark Descent follows Daniel, who awakens in Brennan Castle, unable to remember how he got there. A note that he wrote before forgetting explains that he chose to forget. His amnesia was self-inflicted. The note insists that he kill Alexander of Brennenberg while warning him about a shadow that lurks in the castle. The Justine expansion sees a woman trapped in a gruesome experiment as she navigates a series of puzzles and moral dilemmas. A Machine for Pigs follows the story of Daniel's implied nephew, Oswald Mandus, in London in 1899, trying to rescue his children who are trapped in a bizarre machine. This one does away with the game's sanity and inventory systems and strips itself to the bare minimum to deliver a less tiring, tighter experience. Luigi's Mansion 3 Taking a break from the more obviously terrifying horror games, we move on to Luigi's Mansion 3. This one's the third installment in the Luigi's Mansion series after Dark Moon. Here we play Luigi in the third person, exploring a haunted hotel on an adventure to save his friends from a bunch of ghosts. Every floor of the mansion follows a different theme, and you must navigate them to rescue Luigi's friends after they were deceived into visiting the hotel by King Boo. Playing 
doing this means realizing that it might be Luigi's best adventure yet. You have fun playing it and it certainly got charm. While it spooks in relatively mild ways and the ghosts are more pranksters than they are evil, Luigi's Mansion packs a certain eeriness within its glorious mansion, an impressive character design. After having played through it twice, I can positively say that I am a fan of the music here. Madison. When Luca receives a camera as a gift on his 16th birthday, he can't help but notice how the things around his house move around on their own. Soon, players realize that to play as Luca is to become Madison Hale's next plaything as the spirit plots an evil ritual. The camera used to belong to Hale and serves as your window into the world of the supernatural, even helping you alter in-game environments at times. Madison achieves an incredibly chilling atmosphere. While you explore the house in first person, the evil spirit makes her presence known. The environments, while you solve their Resident Evil-esque puzzles and use a similar inventory system, indicate that the haunting Madison is trying to perform a body exchange ritual. The camera made things interesting and the influence of Kojima's PT was very evident. However, the thing that stuck out most to us was how well this title's sound and graphics brought it to life. Alien Isolation Set in the year 2137, this title is a sequence to Ridley Scott's original 1979 film with Amanda Ripley setting out to recover the black box from her mother's lost ship. Amanda travels with the crew only to find the space station that she tracked the box to in a state of despair. Not only has the data on the black box gone corrupt, but poor Amanda now also finds herself facing a xenomorph. Alien Isolation has you scavenge, improvise and evade as the end goal changes from discovering what happened to your mother's ship to trying to survive the alien's rampage. We advise adopting stealthy and evasive approaches to your encounters, unlike we did while playing this game. The shortage of ammo and impatience will get you killed, while the ruthless xenomorph could carry the game by itself. This sci-fi world has a lot to show you, and it's all hidden away in the deep, horrific shadows. Outlast Bundle of Terror Bundle of Terror was the Switch version that included the base Outlast game along with its whistleblower DLC. Whalen Park is a software engineer for the unethical Murkoff Corporation that runs Mount Massive Asylum, a private psychiatric hospital. When Whalen's guilt gets the better of him, he writes an email to journalist Miles Upshur, exposing the company's wrongdoings. As a result of this, Whalen is thrown in with the other test subjects and Miles arrives at the asylum to investigate. The base game follows Miles' investigation while the DLC narrates Whalen's escape. Outlast is no kiddie pool as far as horror gaming is concerned. With no weapons and only your night vision camera on your person, you can only run or hide in lockers, barrels and more. The pursuers here are quite grotesque too. Each of them is uniquely messed up and leaves quite an impression. Outlast shines brightly as an example of how torturously horrifying a game can be while also delivering tight gameplay in desolate, deranged atmospheres. Dying Light Platinum Edition The fictional city of Haran, in the wake of a mysterious outbreak, has been overrun by its infected zombie citizens. You play the role of Kyle Crane, a global relief effort agent, and your mission is to fight and parkour your way through the hordes of the undead with the goal of recovering sensitive documents that have fallen into the hands of a rogue post-apocalyptic political faction. Over the base campaign, Platinum Edition adds the following expansion to its own story and map, along with the Be The Zombie, Bozak Horde and Hellraid modes. Additionally, there are also a bunch of cool new weapons and skins that make the bundle an enticing deal. While some might feel that it looks better on other platforms, to those people I ask, can you name another like this that's available on the Switch? I was quite forgiving of the graphics because, at the end of the day, this is a heavy game condensed into a game card for a handheld console. Besides, everything to love about Dying Light is still there. The thrilling fights and parkour, the solid day-night cycle and the increased challenge at night and the immersive bleak world. Signalis Signalis is a tasteful indie blend of psychological survival horror with some retro aesthetics. Elster is a replica android who you play in this sci-fi space age era as you look for your lost human partner Ariane. On this quest on an unfamiliar planet, 
you explore a 2.5D world from a third-person, top-down perspective to solve puzzles and survive encounters with nightmarish creatures. Signalis gives you a taste of cosmic dread through its hostile, melancholic environments. This one's like a love letter to survival horror and a homage to the classics. The graphics are pixelated, the soundtrack is eerie, and the atmosphere is unsettling. This surreal narrative with its Lovecraftian themes and enigmatic puzzles will also have you face Elster's inner demons along the way, which we found to be the kind of narrative that lingers in your head for days. I don't think I'm going to forget about Signalis for a long, long time. Resident Evil 3 Remake Yet another Resident Evil Remake. Resident Evil 3 is chronologically set 24 hours before Leon and Claire get to Raccoon City and mainly follows Jill Valentine, an elite stars operative. Playing as Jill, your goal is to get out of the city, but your attempts are thwarted by Umbrella's bioweapon nemesis, who's tasked with hunting down stars members. During certain segments of the game, you also play as mercenary Carlos Oliveira, who strives to rescue civilians and help evacuate the city. After the success of the RE2 remake, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the RE3 remake also splits splendidly captured the tension and fright that the original brought to the table while completely reimagining the way it looks. The focus leans more towards combat than puzzles in this one, and the fast pacing makes it all the more exhilarating as a whole. Unfortunately, this one was a cloud release for the Switch, so you're going to want a solid internet connection to avoid hiccups. Layers of Fear Legacy While there isn't a single explanation of this plot that would do it justice, Layers of Fear is a sorrowful story about a hotshot artist's downfall. Sung through notes and clipped articles left around his fancy Victorian mansion, this ballad has you play the role of the said artist after his life has gone off the rails. Along the way, he lost his inspiration along with nearly everything that his success granted him, and now he staggers around his house drinking and trying to find the right components for his magnum opus because it's all he's got left. Legacy is more than a Nintendo Switch port. We were surprised when we noticed that HD rumble allowed us to open doors and drawers by merely swinging your hands. This release included the base game and the Inheritance DLC, but again, it's more than just a bundle because the experience is made more tactile and immersive for the Switch. Layers of Fear goes beyond psychological horror. It's also psychedelic horror. Your ever-changing environments only aid your descent into madness while the haunting story unfolds. Layers of Fear 2 Where the first one dove into the shattering mind of a painter, Layers of Fear 2 delves into the mind of an actor. It might even do it justice to call James Burns the subject of this Layers of Fear installment, given how most of the time in this one is spent diving into his psyche, his past, his hallucinations, and the supernatural encounters. James's agent convinced him to work for an eccentric director, who demanded that the actor get into character by spending time on an ocean liner. The catch here is that your section of the ship is an isolated one, away from the guests and crew, with only creepy dummies to keep you company as you find film reels to reveal the bigger picture. I was taken aback by how beautifully this one's been written and directed. It explores themes like identity and regret while blurring the lines between what's real and what isn't, like in the first game. I found the non-linear storytelling approach to be quite effective as it managed to capture what a fractured psyche could look like. Fatal Frame – Mask of the Lunar Eclipse The next Project Zero remaster puts you in control of four characters who explore the desolate Rogetsu Island. Ten years ago, when the island was still inhabited, a suspected serial killer kidnapped five girls on the island two of whom are dead in the game's present storyline. The remaining three end up on the island in a quest to find out the truth about their past. They are followed by the detective who saved them a decade ago, and he resumes his investigation of the suspected serial killer. If you're a lover of hardcore horror games that aren't exactly easy to beat, you should seriously check out Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. The controls are challenging to get a hang of, and when you pair them with a the slow character movement and dark atmosphere settings, you have a fear-inducing experience at hand. In addition to the camera obscura, this one also introduces flashlights as weapons. Five Nights at Freddy's Core Collection Our next title is a collection by a franchise that needs no introduction. Five Nights at Freddy's Core includes 
FNAF 1 and 2 and FNAF Sister Location. All games here are the franchise's main storyline, where you're introduced to Freddy Fazbear's pizza chain, mostly as a nighttime employee who must keep the nightmarish animatronic mascots at bay. The basic premise is that you are trapped for the duration of your shift, and the animatronics are out to kill you and stuff you into costumes. As far as fending them off goes, each game will present you with a variety of means to protect yourself. Five Nights at Freddy's is an absolute icon in the horror business and has managed to stay relevant for an impressive amount of time. Within its unsettling character designs and terrifying jump scares, replaying them for the collection really highlighted how interesting the lore is. The Call of Cthulhu Call of Cthulhu is a survival horror RPG that was inspired by H.P. Lovecraft's short story of the same name. It's a video game adaptation of a tabletop RPG. You play the role of alcoholic P.I. Edward Pierce in this psychological horror and design his character's personality yourself by selecting which skills to upgrade and other in-game choices. The general story is that you get to Darkwater Island to look into the case of the Hawkins family, whose members died in a fire. Player choice within this semi-open world heavily influenced the narrative, along with Pierce's mental states. Investigating the world around you and uncovering its messed up secrets often puts you face to face with eldritch horrors detrimental to your in-game sanity. Clue hunting remains this title's most enjoyable aspect, and we even found the atmosphere building and animations to be praiseworthy. Inside, Limbo, followed by an unnamed boy protagonist in color-coded, bizarre environments, Inside is a 2.5D puzzle platformer with side-scrolling levels created by the folks who created Limbo. Where Limbo boasts a fantasy world with its 2D art, Inside adopts a more realistic approach and has players walk, run, climb and swim through its interactive environments and solve puzzles as a young protagonist. While Limbo was presented to us in black and white lighting with minimal ambient sounds and grainy visuals, Inside adopts a single color tone per stage and uses it to highlight your objectives for the level. I couldn't help but notice how Inside played around with my fear of the unknown as it leaves a good chunk of the story up to player interpretation. The team actually sat down together and had a passionate game club sesh about what the twisted ending might imply and ended up arguing for a solid hour. The graphics on both games with their respective styles are quite impressive and make them a must-play on the Switch. Bioshock With a remastered Bioshock collection made available on the Switch, gamers can experience the three titles and join the rest of the Bioshock audience, which hopes to see a fourth Bioshock title soon. This first-person shooter experience takes you to the underwater city of Rapture. Rapture was built to serve as a utopia for the elite to live without restrictions. As if that wasn't inviting enough trouble already, the discovery of a gene-altering substance gave way to a series of twisted inventions. Twenty years in, the protagonist, Jack, crash lands in the Atlantic Ocean and stumbles upon a gateway to rapture, intertwining his fate with the ruined city. The remaster supports 1080p along with improved frame rates, and it runs quite well on the Switch without giving you anything to complain about. The combat mechanics and quality of the graphic design are quite impressive. An inescapable fan favorite made available on the go. Sign me up! Doom Games The notorious Doom titles are more prominent among the smaller list of titles that need no introduction. The nightmarish killing frenzy continues across the series with a Doom Slayer, a Union Aerospace Corporation Space Marine, as he fights demons to save the world from apocalyptic endings. The classics remain relatively cheap purchases and are a great way to get into the franchise. The remastered ones are also available, though, for those who prefer admirable visuals and graphics to their glory kills. For the more most part, Doom sells like lemonade on a hot summer day because it appeals to those who crave fast-paced killing sprees where you endlessly fight challenging waves of enemies. The Switch has all mainstream Doom entries and you're spoiled for choice, so slay away! Carrion. Carrion is what we'd called a reverse horror game. Instead of being hunted, you play as the horror itself. It feels like a power fantasy that demands you go on rampages in the underground lab trying to contain you. You play the role of the monster, a shape-shifting, venom-like entity who breaks free from containment to find the lab's exit. Along the way, not only do you eat humans and give them the ragdoll treatment with your tentacles, 
but you also collect pieces of your scattered genetic code that the scientists extracted for study. These let you evolve and become more powerful. You collect material analyzers that allow you to discover more about the creature's origins. The extremely fluid and smooth gameplay actually made me feel like I was more than a human being. The abilities and upgrades along the way are evenly spread out and make the game feel rewarding consistently. The non-linear progression in this pixel-style game complements its reverse horror concept and makes the overall experience richer for me. Detention. This Taiwanese adventure takes a little time before picking up the pace. Essentially, a side-scrolling puzzle-based survival horror, Detention starts off with a false protagonist, only to kill him off after you've figured out the mechanics. While it starts off slow, foreshadowing the story in the beginning, you soon find yourself playing as Ray, who wakes up in the school's auditorium to find the initial protagonist, her new acquaintance, dead. She must now try to get out of the school without his help while escaping the supernatural forces that she encounters and confronting her own emotions. Detention's story is extremely well laid out and its end feels like a well-coordinated orchestral performance coming to a conclusion. From a simplistic viewpoint, the themes explored here seem unfair, but upon reflecting on them more, I realized that the foreshadowed message makes them important. The immersive tragedy with its dull color tones slowly paints a haunting image that sits with you for days. It undoubtedly deserves a place on your Switch. Stories Untold The next terrifying title takes an episodic approach with four gripping and suspenseful tales weaved together. Anthological horror has been gaining more popularity of late. Not only does Stories Untold tap into that genre, but it also screams 80s retro analog horror. Are you thinking of strange things? You are not all that far from Stories Untold's aesthetic. Most of the text-based gameplay here entails using fictional computers, sometimes from a single perspective, sometimes from two to solve puzzles. The latter half of the game has you explore a little too. The first three episodes appear to be standalone games, whereas the last is a bit more conclusive. In demanding your wit and attention through its challenging puzzles, this one consumes you, even more with its unnerving sound design and retro charm. I'm a fan of this blend, the nostalgic retro vibe in psychological horror. In our collective experiences with this game, not a single one of us got off without being pushed to the very edge of our seat. White Day, a labyrinth named School. Set in South Korea in 2001, he Min Lee has just transferred to the local high school. A day before White Day, which is when men give chocolates back to the women who did the same for them on Valentine's Day. Lee breaks into school to leave some sweets for his crush, along with her lost diary, which he happened to find. Lee now finds himself trapped, left in the building with a few other students, including his crush. However, Lee must soon discover, through encounters with ghosts and possessed staff members, the Institute's harrowing past and certain paranormal events. White Day is not exactly a cakewalk as far as difficulty goes. It's a game that encourages exploration and scavenging. However, while I was exploring, my efforts were hindered by the frequent janitors and ghosts, and they are not exactly easy to shake off. The inventory is limited and the school is quite big. All in all, solving puzzles in this one's hallways and rooms is a stress-inducing experience you won't be able to get enough of. Doctor Who, The Lonely Assassins Delving deep into the wonders, wits and mysteries of the Doctor Who universe, The Lonely Assassins came out as a sequel to the Blink episode. Playing as an unnamed protagonist, you find Larry Nightingale's phone and are soon communicating with Petronella Osgood in an attempt to get to the bottom of Larry's disappearance. While this one is an absolute roller coaster for fans of the franchise with all its Easter eggs and with it being a sequel to one of the best episodes. For non-Hoovians, however, The Lonely Assassin still presents you with an engaging mystery to solve. Finally, a Doctor Who game gave us hope for the franchise's future in gaming. I think it's an achievement how this one manages to be scary. The weeping angels live up to their reputation and will come at you through the smartphone you spend the entirety of the game on. Ghostbusters, the video game remastered. A remaster of the 2009's original Ghostbusters, the video game, has you step into the shoes of a new rookie recruit to the infamous team of parapsychologists as they strap on their proton packs 
and jumpsuits for their adventurous pursuit of the supernatural. Playing from a third-person perspective in the world's semi-realistic style and graphics, you'll find the levels here to be quite thoroughly done, and there'll be plenty of Easter eggs for die-hard fans. The little things add up in this one. For instance, I found it quite refreshing to see that instead of a typical HUD that takes up way too much area on the screen, they integrated simpler indicators into the player's proton pack. This one is essentially the third movie since it's set two years after the second film. The Walking Dead, the Telltale series. Leaving behind the typical puzzles and exploration that we commonly find in adventure games, The Walking Dead's Telltale series features compelling storylines and RPG-like interactions with the franchise's characters. These games are based on Robert Kirkman's TWD comics and start with a zombie pandemic, focusing on a young girl named Clementine and her growth through the series. With these being Telltale games, the focus lies on dramatic scenes, with interactivity in action sequences being bound to quick time events. These point and click adventures place heavy importance on player choices. It's applaudable how these determinants are tracked by Telltale Games to impact the latter parts of the story. The Persistence our next survival horror is set in the first person and has you play as a clone of Zimri Ada, a security officer on board a stranded spaceship called the Persistence in 2057. Your ultimate goal as a player is to get the ship up and running again by reactivating its star drive in order to escape. Hindering your progress in this roguelike manner are the other clones, mutated ones. These have taken over the ship and make your tasks on the ship's foredecks all the more challenging. You can unlock weapon upgrades and player perks by collecting FAB chips scattered across the ship's procedurally generated layout. What makes the Persistence special is how well it transitioned from its native VR form to the well-crafted tense atmospheres and immersive environments presented to us on the Switch. With a good amount of weaponry and equipment at your disposal, the game remains fresh. I was particularly impressed by how this port of a ghoulish experience managed to perform smoothly in both Switch modes, be it docked or handheld. The Coma, Recut and The Coma 2 The Coma Recut is nothing but a Switch port remaster of the first Coma game, Cutting Class, a prequel to The Coma 2, Vicious Sisters. Both of these are side-scrolling horror games and the plot for the first one was centered around a student who fell asleep at school, only to wake up in an alternate reality, a terrifying place overrun by monsters. The second of these extends the nightmare from the confines of the school into the dead of night in the Sewa district. The controls here are quite simple and both games have stood the test of time as good stories. The first had a few minor shortcomings like improper execution, unnatural controls and mediocre voice acting. But the sequel is a title that takes all of these into consideration and the experience is well taken care of. The format feels entirely changed and the series redeems itself as a horror must play for the Switch. I love them for the sense of impending dread they provoked in me. Tormented Souls. In a return to the more classic kind of survival horror, Tormented Souls serve as a fresh take on or a twist on the fixed perspective side of adventure games. When twin girls disappear in an eerie, mission gone hospital, Caroline Walker steps up to investigate. Unfortunately, the strange encounters are only just beginning and things get creepier when she loses consciousness before waking up naked in a tub with a tube in her mouth. The only other signs of life are from a creepy, ignorant man who wouldn't tell you anything meaningful. Along with a badass nail gun and more, Caroline is a bold, curious protagonist who welcomes adventure. In a horror game, finding someone enthusiastically taking on a nerve-wracking adventure is a rare sight. Exploration is vital and is only made a worthy challenge by the labyrinth-like mansion and its puzzles. You can even see the influence of the Resident Evil and Silent Hill games if you look closely. Evil Tonight. If you love Resident Evil-like survival horror titles and find pixelated art design as comforting as I do, you're surely going to find Evil Tonight to be a hidden gem. You'd be hooked 10 minutes in. Silva is an exorcist and a bold modern one at that. One night, 
things don't go according to plan and Silva finds herself trapped in an art school plagued by nightmarish spirits. With no map or guidance to make the unforgiving yet addictive experience easier, you must explore and solve puzzles to find key items and secret parts. You must also keep your ammo consumption in check for there is going to be a shortage. Very Resident Evil, right? The pixel art here is extremely lush and made for visual imagery that consumed me entirely. The lighting effects and color palettes are custom made too. The top-down gameplay is quite addictive and your enemies are no easy obstacle. Your combat knife, the most significant means of defending yourself, demands that you stab like 10 times before an enemy goes down. Playing evil tonight undoubtedly makes for an unforgettable night. Among the Sleep First of its kind here, Among the Sleep will have you controlling a little one and we are talking a toddler level little boy by the name of David. I'm pretty sure I don't need to spell out what placing a toddler as the protagonist does, but what it does is give the story a peculiar freedom. The freedom to take audiences wherever it pleases, as it does in Among the Sleep. On his second birthday, David receives a sentient teddy bear. The second his mother leaves him unsupervised, the bear introduces himself, and the two bond over children's activities. They go on to discover a cavern-like playhouse under the house, which magically sends them on various adventures. What makes this one scary are the three monsters that prowl about looking for you. Among the sleep caught me off guard. When I first started crawling around its vivid and whimsical environment, I was deeply unaware of the punch its narrative would pack. Not only is the gameplay fun and creative with its baby mechanics, but the experience is somewhere in between dreams and reality, and it will leave you curious and yearning for more. Pumpkin Jack our next spooky scary title is a 3D platformer that has players control a spirit who was given the form of a man with a pumpkin for his head. As you guide Jack, the mythical lord of pumpkins, across puzzles and platforms, you are accompanied by a crow and an owl in your quest to defeat mankind and all that's good in the world along with it. Pumpkin Jack takes you to some pretty fantasy-like places in your fight for the dark side. What we enjoyed most about Pumpkin Jack was the way its combat was presented. It's a rewarding, fluid and fast-paced experience with various melee weapons at your disposal. The developers knew what they were going for here very clearly and managed to capture it for the gameplay. The narrative that Pumpkin Jack packs is very well written and every moment that you spend playing this game is far from wasted. In its short playtime and lengthy levels, you notice its old-school charm. Blair Witch. When a missing boy is declared to be the next victim in a series of disappearances since 1994, ex-cop Ellis makes his way to the Black Hills Forest area near Burkittsville to join the search party. Ellis is clueless, however, about the eerie witch that haunts the forest and about how his search for the boy will soon go on to become an endless nightmare. Facing the iconic witch comes with facing your own fears, as Ellis did. This psychological first-person survival horror brings the Blair Witch universe to life. I was already pulling out the dough when they told me that the studio behind Layers of Fear and Observer was launching another title. Then I found out that it was a Blair Witch game. I was ready to trade my car for it. You can only imagine where my head was when they told me I'd get to play alongside a dog for this one. Pre-play impressions aside, we found that the semi-open world here fits perfectly and captures the legendary creepiness of the Blair Witch Project's atmosphere. The ending is excellent and the gameplay only gets better as you play. Don't Starve As far as survival games go, Don't Starve is among the best of the best. This quirky, challenging game has you finding yourself in the dark and strange world that is constant. Constant is overrun not only by otherworldly monsters and shadow creatures, but also by familiar life forms behaving in unfamiliar ways. The story here is minimalistic and revolves mainly around a bearded scientist by the name of Wilson who must survive in this dreary, randomly generated world. Roguelike and survival gameplay elements are seen here and the whole thing can be viewed as a gothic version of Minecraft's survival mode. The world is enormous and its center is you who must gather resources to build stuff while keeping your sanity, health and hunger in check. As unforgiving and brutal as Don't Starve is, I find succeeding in it to be thrice as rewarding. The entire game is made feasible by its crafting system and open-ended gameplay. I was also surprised by how often this one surprised me with new situations to adapt to and overcome. 
Metro 2033 Redux. Metro 2033 is a video game adaptation of Dmitry Glukovsky's 2002 novel of the same name. Redux refers to the remastered version, the one that's among the few Switch ports that don't let the graphical compromise show. You play as Artyom, a young idealist ranger who travels to the depths of the Metro and beyond to save his last leg at home station exhibition. The setting has it so that whatever's left of humanity after a nuclear war has taken charge shelter in underground subway tunnels as the city at surface level was covered in radiation. To survive in the world of Metro 2033, you must make every shot count. You'll be scavenging for and holding on to the limited ammo that you can find. You're also going to want to consider running away and avoiding fights. The visuals for this title are characterized by darker colors, which I believe perfectly capture the tense and gloomy air of desperation that this narrative demands. And because it's a dark looking game, you won't notice jagged edges or so when you play it on the Switch, even in spite of the graphical optimization. Paratopic. The next one is a bit of a fever dream. Paratopic is a distorted presentation of multiple short pieces of a story that intersect or vaguely connect at one point or another. They presented these as varying but detailed vignettes to portray how the game's three characters, a smuggler, an assassin and a photographer, have intertwined stories while leaving the details open to player interpretation. Aside from the seemingly random vignette cuts, the game was also presented in a chronologically mismatched order. To further emphasize the distortion, they even used graphics similar to those of games from the 32-bit era. Paratopic is art. It was meant to be experienced and there isn't any particular explanation of its plot, premise or gameplay that would do it justice. Besides, it's pretty damn hard to explain, but as someone who's played it, I can vouch for it being an ambitious and enigmatic entry. The world makes you feel like you're living in it. Through first-person exploration and the game's bizarre, intense environments, this cryptic narrative leaves a strong impression under the surface. Lo-fi visuals and an unnerving sound design go far to provoke a sense of unease too. Metroid Dread Metroid Dread was a highly anticipated and much-awaited release in the series and offers a convincing plot with addictive platforming gameplay. You play as bounty hunter Samus Aran in her exploration of the planet ZDR and go on to lose most of your technological abilities after being tested by a warrior on the planet. You must now make your way back to your ship to recuperate while fending off what used to be friendly robots. These were reprogrammed and are now trying to capture you. From fast-paced tension-inducing chase sequences and intense combat to puzzle-solving and action platformer exploration, Metroid Dread is loaded with secrets to uncover about the Chozo civilization and your own DNA. I had a ball navigating this nostalgic, thrilling addition to the franchise. And while it doesn't scare in obvious ways, it gets your heart racing with those intense chases and its reflex-stimulating gameplay. Zombie Army 4 – Dead War and Zombie Army Trilogy Rebellion Zombie Army series on the Switch refers to four third-person tactical shooters that are essentially sniper elite spin-offs. The trilogy includes the remastered versions of the first two along with a newer third game and narrates an alternate history set in the latter days of the Second World War where Hitler turns the dead troops into zombies through occult rituals as a final Hail Mary before losing the war. As a result, Germany was overrun with undead Axis soldiers. The fourth game is set a year after the events portrayed in the trilogy and revolves around the continuous zombie threat that Hitler unleashed. The series is best known for its Sniper Elite mechanics as the spin-offs borrow them from Sniper Elite. The graphic and gruesome zombie killing, seamless gunplay and co-op modes remain the series' biggest selling points and the Switch lets you enjoy these on the go. Deadly Premonition Origins Starring FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan as its protagonist, Deadly Premonition Origins is the remastered version of 2010's Deadly Premonition. The narrative unfolds in the fictional American town of Greenvale and walks you through York's investigation of a murder that might be linked to a series of murders across the country. Unlike most of the games we've covered so far, this title is an open-world game with third-person exploration, supernatural zombie types, cutscenes and level objectives. Its most in-your-face quality is the heavy influence of the classic TV series Twin Peaks, 
and we see a lot of Special Agent Dale Cooper in Special Agent York. This one's a polarizing title with ratings as low as twos and as high as the full tens. It's simple, but I most enjoyed how silly and hilarious this one was while still being a darkly eerie survival horror title. Bendy and the Ink Machine Moving on to Bendy and the Ink Machine When Joey Drew of Joey Drew Studios writes to you his retired ex-animator Henry Stein inviting you to return to the studio in an attempt to save its once glorious name you decide to go see how the animators have operated since you left To your dismay when you get there you notice the ghosted studio in a state of disrepair and mysterious paranormal instances all around it The Ink Machine something you've heard about for the first time Time is somehow responsible for all that's wrong with the place. As you play through its five chapters and dive into the studio's depths, the picture becomes clearer and you learn about how the studio came to be what it currently is. In spite of its animation-themed storyline, Bendy and the Ink Machine manages to be a horrifying Layers of Fear-esque story involving the studio head trying to revive his dying business. It packs some stunning exploration, evasion and environmental puzzles with light combat. This one has my vote when it managed to get me with one of its jump scares, even in handheld mode. Shadow Man Remastered Shadow Man Remastered calls back to the classic 1999 action-adventure title wherein the players were made to play Michael Leroy, who becomes the next Shadow Man. He comes from a lineage of voodoo warriors who protect the human world from supernatural threats. You soon find yourself tasked with traveling between the realms of the living and the dead in order to thwart the apocalyptic plans of the Legion, the Big Bad. Shadow Man is surely a one-of-a-kind game. The formula is an old one with the game's deliberate main in dark themes and demonic entry hordes. The remaster offers improved graphics, sound design and overall gameplay enhancements, along with the preserved narrative and overall experience. Something I quite liked was how well optimized this occasionally 3D Metroidvania title is on the Switch. Simulacra. As our list's next electrifying detective horror, we have 2017 Simulacra. The story here is that you find a phone that supposedly belongs to Anna, who has gone missing. While Anna is nowhere to be seen, her phone's acting weird, and a video on it shows a distressed Anna begging viewers to stop trying to help her. Your goal now is to collect as much information about Simulacrum, the AI responsible for the disappearance, as you can, and ultimately rescue Anna. Simulacra is a spiritual successor to Sarah is missing and is based on a similar found phone concept. There are four endings and your choices push you towards one of these narrative branches. The best part about it was that this found phone experience managed to build an atmosphere really well. And even when you're using the smartphone, you're free to interact with it in various ways, but you will encounter some jump scares and scary glitches. Happy's Humble Burger Farm In spirit, Happy's Humble Burger Farm plays like a work simulator and sees the players join the fast-growing titular food chain as employees. The gameplay is mostly taking orders and preparing food items like sandwiches, drinks, pies, nuggets and more. As you progress, you'll also be dealing with unforeseen emergency tasks like dealing with rodent breaches. It'll be pretty standard restaurant experience if it weren't for Happy the Humble Haifa. Happy is the store mascot who's known for having a short temper towards tardy employees. You must keep her at bay by not messing up and consistently keeping an eye on her to prevent her from moving. You can also make a rotten burger for her, which for some reason gets her to chill out. The influence of the iconic FNAF series is quite evident here. However, I think it's important that I clarify that this one is far from a ripoff. It's far more unique than it sounds and it only looks to FNAF for inspiration. The mascots in the game have deep origin stories and the game even packs humorous elements making it a more out-of-the-box horror experience. While playing it on the Switch, I found the controls to be a bit laggy, but the hectic gameplay and world depicted make you forget all about them. Friday the 13th, The Game Ultimate Slasher Edition. Much like Dead by Daylight or Evil Dead, this Friday's 13th game takes the form of an asymmetrical multiplayer survival horror that pits eight players against each other. One of the eight dons the mantle of Jason Voorhees, whereas the other players participate as counselors trying to survive, escape or take down Voorhees. The killer has abilities and only gets stronger with time as the night progresses. As Jason, you must hunt down all counselors. 
The counselors must race time and work together to survive the night. The Ultimate Slasher Edition was released for the Switch and it included all DLCs, skins, maps, challenges and more. This might be the best time to consider playing this one because it won't be available for purchase until 2024 and can be played till the end of 2024. Friday the 13th, the game is undoubtedly one for the fans and brings a much appreciated style of gameplay to Jason Voorhees' cult classic universe. Blasphemous our final game for this list is Blasphemous, a challenging platformer that's known for how unforgiving it can be in more ways than one. The plot unfolds in the nightmarish world of Custodia, a religious setting influenced heavily by Roman Catholicism and Spanish culture. We follow the penitent one who seeks redemption in a land plagued by religious fervor and grotesque monsters. As the story unfolded through the game's cryptic lore and environmental storytelling in this Metroidvania title, I found myself looking forward to the next combat sequence or boss battle with the game's intricate fight mechanics. Using my sword and casting ranged spells was no easy task, while simultaneously trying to figure out the enemy's pattern. Tough but rewarding nonetheless. The gameplay doesn't necessarily scream the kind of horror one might expect, but in exploring themes of guilt, atonement and religion in this grim experience, Blasphemous earns itself a spot on our list. Marvelous Verdict And there you have it folks, this has been our very own venture into the best horror titles for Nintendo's flexible and innovative Switch. From psychological thrills to survival horrors, this console has something for every horror fan. So whether you're walking one of the many haunted halls of Resident Evil, surviving the night in Little Nightmares, or solving mysteries in The Coma, the Switch is perfectly equipped to quench your thirst for the scary.